As we celebrate the ascension of the Lord, it's a day of joy. God has intervened in the history of humanity. The Jewish people knew that we were in a fallen world with injustice, with evil, with sin, and that God had promised a Savior, a Messiah, who would intervene to establish a kingdom of God, a kingdom of justice, a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of order, where God would rightly have his place. How would the Savior, the Messiah, establish the kingdom? That wasn't clear, perhaps militarily, perhaps by force. And what we celebrate is that Jesus Christ has come to establish this kingdom. But he did it in a very humble, very simple, very quiet, very patient way. But with this ascension, Jesus takes his place at the right hand of the Father. And so Jesus has reestablished this kingdom for those who believe, for those who welcome, for those who accept. And so Jesus comes and manifests to us who the Father is. We see that in his actions, in his words, that he is love. And this love conquers all things. This love is what has been resurrected. This love conquers all evil, all injustice, all sin. It's been resurrected. It's what's eternal. And with the ascension has entered into heaven. And so now we know who God is. Now we know that God acts with a good intention. Now we know that God acts on our behalf. Now we know that God is love, is mercy. And so we can allow him to lead our lives. We can allow him to guide us. We can trust him. We can abandon ourselves to him. And we can also enter into this kingdom. We can also experience this kingdom. It's something that happens at the same time that the kingdom of this world continues. And so Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, and there he continues to act. He continues to save. He continues to work through the church. Something that's important about the ascension is that Jesus is God. Jesus is eternal. He is always the Son. But he didn't always have flesh and blood. That happened for the first time with the Incarnation. In the womb of Mary, God became man. God took on human flesh. And this is important because at the ascension, when Jesus returns to the Father, when Jesus returns into heaven, for the first time, he takes humanity with him. For the first time, he takes a human body into the life of the Trinity. And so now humanity has entered into the life of the Trinity. And this is a good news for us because where our head is, the body hopes to go. And so the church is the body of Christ. And now we know where we're going. Now we know our destiny. Now we know what we are created for to enter into the life of God, to enter into the life of the Trinity. And so that's why it's important here that we enter into the body of Christ, that we are one with Jesus, so that we can share in his victory. We can share in his divinity. We also can enter into the life of the Trinity. It's something that we will experience in its fullness after death, but it's something that is already and not yet, which means that we can participate in this divine life already here, already now. And it's why the church is able to do acts that are divine. And so the church is the body of Christ. The church is something human and something divine. And so Jesus continues to act through his body. And again, this is a good news for us. 
So Jesus appeared for 40 days to the apostles. And this is the time that we've been in. We've been in this time after the resurrection and before the ascension. And Jesus was manifesting his glorious body, his resurrected body. And then he ascended into heaven. He ascended at the right hand of the Father. And as we heard in the second reading, that raising him from the dead, seating him at the right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named. So Jesus Christ, with his humanity, is above all the angels. He's above all the principalities. And he's there. But also we heard in the first reading, he said, that waits for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so everything that we've been celebrating in this Easter season is connected. So Jesus Christ entered into death. He entered into our death. And he's resurrected. He's resurrected with eternal life. And with the ascension, he enters into heaven. But he's at the right hand of the Father so that he can send the Holy Spirit upon the church. And so in these days, in this novena between Ascension and Pentecost, the early church was gathered with Mary. They were in the cynical, praying, believing in the promise that God would be faithful, that he would send the Holy Spirit upon the church. And so above all, in these days, we also pray with Mary. We also pray the same prayer with the same hope, believing in the same promise that God will send the Holy Spirit upon us. That God will send the Holy Spirit upon the church. That God will send the Holy Spirit upon the world. And this is what the world's waiting for. They're waiting for the children of God. Waiting for the church. Waiting for us to receive this gift of the Holy Spirit. Because God always respects our freedom. And so he desires to send the Holy Spirit upon us. But we are the ones who have to be open. We're the ones who have to desire. We're the ones who have to ask. We're the ones who have to believe. We're the ones that have to hope that God does send his spirit upon us so that we can participate already here in this life of God, so that God is free to work through us, so that he can continue his salvation through his body, through the church. And so... We enter into this Eucharist, we enter into this time, giving thanks for the victory that has already been won, that Jesus Christ has established the kingdom, that Jesus Christ is present in the church, that Jesus Christ is victorious at the right hand of the Father. And all of this is for us, so that we can participate in this victory, we can enter into the kingdom, we can participate in the life of God. And so we enter into this Eucharist, giving thanks for our Savior, giving thanks for our Messiah, giving thanks that God the Father has sent us a Savior so that we can enter into the life of God.